Hi kids, Lisa here with another hashtag 78 days. I believe it's day 70, 30, it's day 78, I'm all done. Um, yeah, I know that it's the eight of pentacles. Um, so before I dive in, I just wanna draw attention to this. Um, that is what we call empty space. Some of you may kind of recognize by my Eloise uh, poster. Um, you may recognize this backdrop as something that used to be cluttered with books. The books have been moved. I'm going to get rid of this desk, desk actually, and, and kind of rearrange this space. And it's been moved in order to create space for the work that I'm about to uh, dive into you know, more or less full time, which is writing my book, Mindful Tarot. Contract with Llewellyn, manuscript due March 1st, 2018. Ooh. Um, and actually that creation of space, um, don't worry, there's, uh, oh, I don't know if I can flip this. Oh, well, I was gonna flip the camera and show you like the, the clutter over there. There's still tons of clutter. Um, <laughs> but you know, that creation of space in order to get work done, in order to make it possible to dedicate oneself to like the consistency of a task at hand. I, I mean, that's, that's a little bit relevant for today's card, the Eight of Pentacles. Um, you know, more than anything else, I've been thinking, um, as I've been working through the Pentacles, the ways in which this is a deck, um, a suit, that is really about our relationship to work. Or let's put it this way, the way in which our relationship to the material world is a relationship of labor, a relationship of work, which means that there's not just effort, but stress and strain, struggle, suffering bound up in that. You know, and, and uh, the Judeo-Christian myth about all of this, of course, links everything back to the Garden of Eden and, you know, tries to explain, like, you know, why, do, like a just-so story, like Rudyard Kipling, well, how did the leopard get its spots? How did it turn out that humans labor you know, that, that childbirth is freaking painful as hell and, you know, can produce mortality in the, in the very process of giving birth to life. How is it, why is it that, like, it's so freaking hard just to eat? Why isn't that easy? Why isn't life easy? So the Judeo-Christian myth is, well, because we were naughty. <laughs> we were naughty. We got kicked out of a place where life was easy. Uh, the Buddhist uh, diagnosis is a little bit different and has to do with the nature of greed and aversion. Uh, the Pentacles offer their own investigation of this question. Um, the deck I'm using is Lana Zellner's um, really quite lovely 78 cards. I have the self-published version, which I got in. I'm trying to, I don't think there's a way for my face to be visible and for the cards to be visible. Visible, Maybe there is. Um, I got it, I uh, purchased, purchased it, bought it from a taradist, and um, I quite like it, although I've noticed that it smudges. Um, but at any rate, um, apologies for the lighting. One of these days I'll actually figure out how to light, <laughs> how to actually create YouTube videos that are not irritating to watch. Um, but that would also probably mean that I would have to film at the same time every day and get decent equipment and all of that stuff. Um, oh, I kind of love this Seven of Pentacles. The, you know, uh, the fruits of one's labor springing from our hands. And we'll come back to the Eight in a, in a minute. So, you know, this, uh, and notice how this is something I'll talk about tomorrow, but the, the way in which the hood that's on the bird in the Nine of Pentacles, which seems really interesting to me. And I think another element of Lana Zellner's deck that is really interesting is the, the clock in the page. Because here's the thing about, about Pentacles, here's the thing about work, is you know time, time is involved in this. Our relationship to time, which is ultimately our relationship to our mortal, this mortal coil, you know, um, our relationship to a natural process of 
maturation and decline and our relationship to a natural world that feeds us, you know, that feel, feeds us and then also threatens us and that we have more or less harmonious connection to. Um, you know, in the Seven of Pentacles, as we were talking about it yesterday, um, you know, that kind of ambiguity of our relationship to the natural process of growth and harvest. And um, Melanie uh, Lucia, or Lucia, I don't know how to pronounce your name, and if you're watching, let me know. Um, anyway, it's just wonderful, wonderful uh, tarotist, just beautiful interpretations. And she was saying, you know, that the thing about this card that she always notices is this pentacle at the guy's feet. There's like, you know, one way to read this ambiguous expression, this ambiguous moment in the cycle of human work and um, reward is to say, like, you know, you get to the, you get to the end of that, that journey, that, that process, and you're like, ah, eh, geez, I did all this work, and what I wanted was right here at my feet all along. It's like, you know, the, the Wizard of Oz story all over again. You know, there's no place like home. You get, you get back to Kansas like, you were there, and you were there, and you were there. Um, so let me turn off the things that are beeping and bopping. So that ambiguity, you know, like what is this, what is this time-bound uh, activity where I put my energy into something and I wait, I wait, I wait. What is that all about? Um, you know, the Eight of Pentacles says this is about craft. This is about a kind of consistency of effort, a kind of precision, right? This is about, like, my husband, you know, who, who, who's a writer, is a beautiful poet. Um, he talks about, like, the phenomenon and the necessity of ass and chair. You know, how do you want to be a good writer? How do you want to, how do you want to write? Ass and chair, ass and chair. It's like you just sit Put your fingers on the keyboard and your rights, you know? So, I mean, in some sense, that's what I'm kind of pointing to here with the, the space I've created. It's like, you know, I just write. Less focus on the product, less focus on the harvest, and more focus on the craft. And I think that this is what Robin Scott and her, you know, just completely wonderful urban tarot, which I've been loving getting to know in physical form, um, um, her Eight of Pentacles. She talks about how, and you know, I have the physical deck, but of course I'll show it to you on my iPhone and that won't even show up, but okay. Um, so she talks about how she was really struck by the similarity between the round discs that are being hammered out in Pixie's imagery in the Eight of Pentacles um, to the faces of a watch. And so her depiction within the Crowley system where the Eight of Pentacles, the Eight of Discs is prudence. And prudence is all about time. Like that word prudence comes from the Latin word, um, the Latin root for providence. I mean, it's a con condensed version of providence. It means to see, see into the future. I've talked about this before, but you know, prudence is about our relationship to time through our experience. Um, that's why the hermit with his his uh, lamp, which was originally an hourglass, was, has been interpreted in the past as the figure of prudence. Because prudence, that, that knowledge based on experience, is about a relationship to time. And if you think about the watchmaker literally relating to time, but also the, the careful precision of his, of his craft. So in Zellner's deck, the Eight of Pentacles. <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry, I'm struggling here with light and dark. <laughs> the eternal the eternal problem of enlightenment. Um, you know, this sort of, to me, you know, it, to me, you know, the image of the protractor and the compass, you know, which is just so, like, emblematic of a kind of precision, a kind of work. And, you know, for me, this, this really just brings to mind, and she's so obviously, like, a student, right, with her books, um, and her youthful air. And it just brings to mind, I was just in Staples, you know, the office supply store the other night and uh, early evening. And, you know, it's the beginning of the year. This is right after Labor Day. And all the parents with their kids are there and they're buying the school supplies for the year. And just that feeling of, okay, I'm going to buy the glue and I'm going to buy the compass. And I'm going to buy the protractor. I'm going to buy the ruler and the, the, the lined paper. 
And it's that relationship to the material world as a world of tools and uh, crafts and uh, consistent engagement. You know, with this recognition, people often talk about the Eight of Pentacles as being kind of the card of the apprentice, and they think about the Three of Pentacles maybe as the card of the master. Um, and I used to be really confused by that. Like, why is the three earlier in the sequence, why is that mastery and the eight is apprenticeship? And now I understand it, the ways in which, you know, if we think about it as master and apprentice, and that's not how I think about the three and the eight anymore, but, you know, that apprenticeship of the eight, you know, whether it's the, the, um, the watchmaker or in the writer weight, sorry, patience, um, you know, the, the rider weight imagery, um, you know, diligently carving out the, the pentagrams on his pentacles. You know, when we think about the position of the apprentice as being about a kind of um, the self getting out of the way and the work taking the the foreground, a work that has a kind of consistency, a kind of predictability, a kind of vigor, a kind of engagement over time. Less about product, more about process. Less about uh, masterpiece and more just about the peaceful working through with the materials at hand. It's very, you know, very like akin to a, a Zen notion of, you know, chop wood, carry water. It's that kind of absorption in the task that we might associate with the work of an apprentice who just, you know, goes after the same kind of refining, refining, refining their skills. But I think the point of the Eight of Pentacles, and particularly coming after the ambiguous relationship in the Seven to labor and the fruits of one, one's labor is, you know, just dive in to your relationship with the world of matter the world that matters. You know, clear your desk, ass in chair. You know, just, just dive in. Okay, on that note, with the light <laughs> washing out this video, I hope, I hope it was easy enough to see the cards. And I thank you, as always, for joining me and uh, blessings to you in your work, whatever it is right now, tomorrow, the next day. And thank you all so much for your practice.